Okay, so I'm gonna go over how I would set up audio for OBS. Uh, let's say you recently wiped Windows and you just freshly installed OBS and you lost all your filters. Uh, this is what I would sort of do. Um, this recently happened to me, which is why I'm familiar with everything right now. <laughs> uh, that being said, uh, we'll get started. So first of all, uh, whether you have a headset mic or a mixer, that sort of does make a difference. Uh, so we'll start with the headset mics because uh, that's probably the most common. So first of all, if you have like a literal paper cup attached to string, OBS can't really do anything to fix that. Um, right, you're sort of capped by if you have bad hardware. So if you have like, you know, a five or $10 microphone, it might be worth it to, uh, to invest in an upgrade. So one thing that's really important for headsets is the placement of your microphone. So let me just pull in, there you go. So the placement of your microphone is really important. So as you can see with the little girl right here, her microphone is at the corner of her mouth, facing her mouth, right? It's not directly in front of your mouth. Directly in front of your mouth is bad. That's going to catch your breathing. That's going to catch you, I don't know, making noises with your mouth that you might not want being captured by the microphone. But the corner of your mouth, facing your mouth, is where you want it to be. Uh, same thing with this guy. It's like right at the corner here, and it's facing his mouth. Um, something to add on that, if you have like PC filters, uh, filters, PC fans close by, uh, if your PC is close by, Let's see your PCs on your left, and if you can choose and have your microphone on your left facing right, that's not going to capture the PC noises as much, or if you have like any other ambient noise around. Um, you want the microphone facing the primary source of sound, and preferably not anything else. All right. There you go. So headset mic, corner of mouth, facing your mouth. Uh, as far as mixers go, so I have a mixer. Um, I have a Mackie soundboard of some sort with an AG2020. Um, the only big thing, so obviously you would need to set up all that stuff on your own. I'm not going to go through everything on a soundboard, but the only big thing that you need to remember is that, uh, when you plug it into your computer, uh, if you plug it in through an audio jack, you want to make sure you plug it in through line in and not mic in. Uh, so mic in or microphone in rather has something called plug-in power. And that adds about five volts, um, of electricity to whatever you plug in. So if you plug in like a normal microphone, which doesn't have its own power source, it needs power to function, right? Things can't function without electricity. Uh, but if you plug in a soundboard into mic in, then that extra um, extra electricity is going to cause feedback, uh, not feedback. It's going to cause, what's the word? I forget the word. It's going to cause white noise, which is essentially what it is. No, it'll, it'll come back. It'll come back like halfway through the video. <laughs> It's going to cause white noise, and you don't want that to happen. Interference, that's the word. It's going to cause interference, white noise, you don't want that to happen. So you want to make sure if you have a soundboard to plug it into line in, not mic in. Um, if, you have like a, if you're going through a laptop or something, usually Windows has its own, um, its own prompt. You can choose what you just plugged in. Um, so you can do that too. Uh, all right, sound settings. So if you right click right here and go into sound settings. Uh, so first of all, will manage sound devices, I would disable everything you're not going to use. So I have my speakers, I have my headphones, I use both of those, and then line in is my microphone, I use that. I don't use my microphone web, um, my webcam microphone rather, or you know like the speakers on my, uh, on my monitors, I don't know why one of my monitors is there twice, that's really weird. Um, but I'm not using those, so I'll disable them. Uh, having two output devices though is going to be useful for later, I'll talk on that. Uh, if you only have headphones, for example, uh, you can download a virtual audio cable, which will uh, emulate the same thing. Uh, but I'll talk about why two output devices is good later. Um, one important thing, though, is we'll go in device properties and input. So you want to make sure that this is at 100, right? If it's lower, if it's at, let's say, 50, and you need to artificially boost your volume in OBS, that's going to make you sound a bit distorted. And you don't really want a, like, crunchy sounding voice. Um... Not crunchy the person, crunchy the like sound. You don't want that. You want to make sure this is at 100 so that uh, there's as much volume that your microphone gets that goes to OBS. And yeah. So that's going to be that. Uh, actual OBS now. Oops. Okay. So actual OBS, this is, I think this is the default layout. I tried to put it back as much as possible. Two things you'll want to do, first of all, is right click here and go vertical layout. This just makes a lot more sense, honestly. Um, and I like having my audio stuff on the right here. So all of these, uh, you can you can drag them. 
I guess scene transition is usually somewhere else, whatever. So I like having my audio stuff on the right here. Um, let's play in settings a bit. So in audio settings, uh, I have everything disabled. Uh, if you can see, I have everything added manually in the scenes. Uh, I'll go over that later though. Uh, so everything disabled here, it is a bit of a quality of life improvement. Um, and then sample peak, you don't you don't need to change this, but if you want to, it doesn't actually change the audio stuff, it just changes the visuals here. If I apply that, it just shows it uh, a bit differently. Um, but if you know about as much as I do about audio, it doesn't really matter what you use. Uh, the important thing is monitoring devices. So I set this to headphones. Don't set it to default because uh, it doesn't like whenever you switch, uh, like right here, whenever you switch your default uh, playback device. So I just set it to headphones. Be careful if you set it to speakers, because if you talk into your microphone and it comes out the speakers and then the speaker sound goes into your microphone, that's going to cause a feedback loop and you will destroy anybody wearing headphones. Uh, so don't do that. You also might blow out your speakers if it gets too bad. <laughs> um, so yeah, don't change this if you don't need to. Uh, the only other thing is that hotkeys for a microphone, it's pretty useful, but uh, other than that, Everything's pretty standard. Okay, so why do I have everything as a separate source? Um, so a big reason is if you have a BRI back screen. So if I have a BRI back screen, for uh, one sec, let's move this here. So actually I actually have two scenes. I think I already deleted my, oh no. Oh wait, this goes here, excellent. All right, so as you can see on this scene, I have a microphone input. Oops, a microphone input right here. On my BRI back screen, I don't. So there's no mic input. So let's say I'm talking, I'm talking, I'm talking, I'm talking, I'm talking, I'm talking. I'm talking, I'm talking, I'm talking. Since there's no microphone input, every time I go to my BRI back screen, I don't need to remember to mute my microphone, right? Um, so on my actual BRI back screen, I actually have nothing, and I just have a, a music player in the background that just plays music. It's it makes things a bit simpler, in my opinion. Um, so a bit of a quality of life improvement, just having these separate. So let's talk about filters. Uh, filters is probably one of the biggest reasons you're here. Uh, so I have my own set of filters here. I only have five. Uh, some people have more, some have less. Having less isn't that bad though. Um, one thing that I'll note right now is that uh, filters get applied in a chain. So here my compressors is going to get applied first, and then my limiter, and then my noise suppression, and then my gain, and then my noise gate. Um, that's going to be important for later, but that's also just something to keep in mind if you want to just uh, play with your filters. Uh, last important thing is actually setting up your audio monitoring. Uh, so if you right click in your audio mixer or if you uh, click on the cog, the last option is advanced audio properties. Uh, and here we're going to go into microphone. Oops, one sec. Yeah, we're going to go into microphone and then monitor and output. So in this case, it's going to go to the stream, but also to my headset because uh, my headphones is what I set as the default audio monitoring uh, device. And now if I speak, I can hear myself talk because I'm a human. And also I can hear myself through my headphones. Uh, so unfortunately, the side effect of that is you're going to hear yourself in double which is not a good time. Um, but unfortunately, it's sort of required if you want to if you want to play with your filters. So let's start off and we're just going to delete everything. So now I'm speaking as I was before. I'm probably a bit quieter. That's okay. We're going to work on that. Uh, so the first thing we're going to fix is adding a compressor. So what a compressor does is that it's going to smooth out the peaks. So in audio, think of like an audio wave. It goes up and down. A compressor is going to smooth out the peaks so that the loud parts aren't as loud. Uh, let me just mute this. Uh, also, if you uh, mute or unmute something, that's um, that's whether it gets applied or not. So right now it's not getting applied. Uh, as far as a human speaking voice goes, uh, a ratio of 4 to 1 or 5 to 1 is pretty good. I like 4 to 1. Uh, and then what the threshold does is that, uh, let's set this to minus 20 to start out. Great. So it's at minus 20. Let's say I speak at minus 16. What the ratio does is that since it's a, a ratio of 4 to 1, it's going to take those 4 decibels above the threshold and make it 1. So instead of speaking at minus 16, I'll be speaking at minus 19. 
Uh, so let's just apply this compressor. And you might not be able to hear that much of a difference. That's okay. Uh, it's just uh, the louder you get, the more um, of a difference it's going to start making. So let's say I'm speaking and I'm hitting, I'm hitting about uh, minus six actually, but my average is, I'd say between minus 10 and minus 15. That is a bit loud. Um, so I'm gonna have the compressor go to, let's go minus 22. So that's just for me, obviously. You want it about, uh, so minus 22 is around here. I'm speaking around here. So about 10 decibels is, uh, is pretty acceptable. So now when I'm speaking, you see that uh, I'm sort of hitting that between minus 15, minus 20, uh, maybe all the way up to minus, uh, minus 12, 13, instead of all the way up to like, you know, minus six that I was at before. So that's just what the compressor does. It smooths out the peaks. Um, so if the compressor smooths the peaks, the limiter is going to be a hard stop. So you can never, in this case, get above minus six. Now, I'm actually never going to get there because I'm not speaking that loudly. Um, but I'm still speaking at, you know, minus five. I'm getting all the way here-ish, which is, let's say, minus nine. So actually, minus six is pretty good to me. You want it to be above five, about five decibels above uh, what your normal speaking voice is. Uh, I'm actually going to bring it down. Maybe minus eight would be good for me. Uh, again, it's just trial and error. And... Uh, Worst case, you. Uh, this isn't again. This isn't a cookie cutter format. It uh, it really depends on your microphone and on your voice. Um, you might need to play with these values if you find your voice getting a bit too crunchy, but uh, minus eight is probably good for me. All right. So the next one we're gonna add is gain. So this is gain is sort of a, the artificial increase of your voice. Uh, so I want my normal speaking voice to sort of uh, hit the minus 10 threshold, so about right where the red line starts. So I'll just add five decibels and sort of, uh, all right, so now if I'm speaking normally, I'm sort of hitting it, but I'm sort of still uh, below it a tiny bit. So let me just add six decibels. And now when I speak, yeah, now I'm hitting around uh, that place that I wanna be at, so that's okay, that's good. So I add six decibels of gain here and I start sounding uh, a bit as loud as I would wanna be if I was streaming. Um, one thing though that gain also adds, it also adds gain to all the ambient noise you might have in the background. So if you have uh, headphones on or if you have a good set of speakers, you might notice a bit of white noise in the background or uh, I think they're my PC fans or something. So if I just stop talking. Yeah, so you can see it right here. There's a 15 or all, yeah, 15 decibels here. Um, that should probably be cut out because it's just white noise, right? So if I stop talking again. So we don't want all this stuff down here. So what we're gonna add for that is a noise suppression filter. And there you go, you also sort of already saw it. Uh, the noise suppression filter, we're actually gonna add it on top of the gain. So you can either, uh... oh, you can't drag them. Okay, so you need to use the arrows down here just to move them up and down. Uh, so let me just take off the gain for a sec. And then I'll just look at uh, where where the white noise is sort of uh, starting at. All right, so it's between minus five, uh, minus fifty five, and minus like fifty one, fifty two, maybe. So I'll put it at the minus fifty mark. Uh, the noise suppression works in reverse, so I don't want to put minus fifty. I want to put minus ten because it just is going to cut off uh, the last ten. I'll put minus twelve. It's going to cut off the last 12 decibels of sound. So now if I stop talking, the white noise is gone. And let me just turn off the noise suppression filter. And there you go. It's easy as that. It's magic. Uh, so now if I were to add the gain back in, so now I'm speaking uh, a lot louder again, obviously, but now there's no more white noise. So again, if I stop talking, Okay, it's creeping in a bit, but it's a lot better than what it was before, which was this. Yeah, it's a lot better. Um, that little pop was really weird though. Sometimes that happens when you play with filters. The last thing we're going to add is a noise gate uh, right here. So a noise gate is gonna stop everything underneath a certain threshold from coming through to the stream. Uh, so one problem though, is that you don't want to set the noise gate too high, right? So let's say I'm speaking at like, we'll put it at minus 10 for fun. 
All right, so now let's say when I'm speaking, uh, you might start noticing that I'm going to start like cutting it in and out a bit. That's the effects of the noise gate. Right, so the effects of the noise gate is it's going to cut out everything if it's under um, the open and close threshold, right? So it's not going to let anything in until your sound goes above the open threshold, and it'll keep uh, the sound going through until uh, you stop speaking and it goes below the closed threshold. Uh, so in my case, again, it looks like I'm hitting right at the start of the uh, the red line at the minus 10 mark. So I'm actually going to put it around the minus 20, uh, give myself about 10 decibels of leeway. Uh, a noise gate is also good. Let's say you have a controller that's like clacking a bit. It doesn't clack as much with the noise gate. Um, so open threshold, minus 20. Closed threshold is uh, between minus 6 and minus 10 uh, compared to what the open threshold is is pretty good. So minus 27, that's perfect for me. I'll leave it like that. And that is your filters. Uh, you can also add filters um, to your other audio sources. So I just have a basic compressor and limiter here. And it works out well. Speaking of though, I didn't get to that, why I have both headphones and speakers here. Um, so let's say I open OBS, nope, Discord. So in my user settings, uh, you'll see that um, it always outputs to headphones, which means that if I wanna stream with somebody, they're gonna be outputting to the headphones. I can just control the headphone section and that's going to control all the Discord stuff as opposed to my game sound is going to be coming through my speakers, so I can control that individually. Um, so that's, in my opinion, an important quality of life thing. Again, if you don't have two, uh, two output devices, one sec. I'm going to turn this off, thank God. <laughs> okay, that was getting annoying. If you don't have two output devices, though, um, virtual audio cables can do the difference. But for now, uh, Discord's always going to come through my headphones, which is always going to come through my headphones here. And then I have, um, well, I have the rest set to my basic uh, audio stuff. That being said, though, if you do go in sound settings, uh, you can set customized things for everything. Uh, this only shows like recent, uh, recent audio things. So let's say I just open that music playing earlier. There you go. So Google Chrome shows up as well. Sorry. And you can just set these, uh, the, the default input and output. So if you want uh, you know, Google Chrome to always come through your speakers, it's fine. If you want it to, well, I only have one microphone, so that's, uh, that's always going to be the default, rather. But yeah, if you want uh, individual stuff like that, that's good too. Um, so now, let me just move this back here, because we are going into the video game. Excellent. So... I have my um, my game sound coming through my speakers, so let's say I just go back in. One sec. All right, let's say I just go back in the game and I start playing around. All right, well, that that works out. So preferably, I want my game sound to be right at the start of the of the yellow bar, maybe a bit louder. So let me just boost that up a bit. Let's just set it to zero and see uh, see where it goes from there. Uh, I do have uh, my sound um, separated uh, into my game capture program. All right, it actually is getting a bit loud. But anyways, you can play around with that. Uh, you can also, again, set your, your speakers um, and your microphone as a monitoring device if you want to do it that way. Oops, uh, one sec, I'm not on my monitor. There you go. You can set your speakers and uh, your microphone to your monitoring device and work on it that way. Uh, but for the most part, uh, I would just start here, I would just balance it and see you know, if there are any loud parts you can do that. Uh, if you want to use a compressor, for example, if there's uh, a lot of... Um... I'll just drop it down. You can use a compressor if there's a lot of like a dynamic range sort of thing, if you're playing like a shooting game with explosions or something. And a limiter. Um, I don't, but I probably should. And... Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's pretty much it. Um, I don't think I forgot anything. Uh, so the only last thing is that uh, if you want like an actual recording of yourself talking, you can just go stop recording, 
or start recording rather play for a bit talk a bit within discord stop recording you'll have to listen to yourself uh in your um wherever your videos get saved which is yeah in your recording path so output recording path just go there check those videos out listen to them if they sound good fantastic if not just tweak the filters a bit more tweak the sounds and that's pretty much it for me. So just last, last thing, I promise. Um, if you're wondering about any of the filters that I was talking about, you literally just Google OBS filters and the first link that pops up talks about uh, all the audio device filters right here. There's also the image filters if you're interested in that stuff. Uh, but it talks about compressor. It talks about uh, a lot more in depth than, uh, than what I covered, obviously. Uh, but with that, I hope you guys liked everything. And... Thanks for watching.